Hello and welcome back to the Gospel Teachings of Richard Arlen Kern. Uh, today we are going to be talking about The Beginning. Uh, his title here is The Beginning, What Occurred and When. <laughs> Summary is, in the beginning, approximately 6,139 years ago, God created the universe, including the earth, man, and every living, th living thing on the earth, in six 24-hour days. He flooded the entire earth during Noah's day, a minimum of 1,656 years after the creation, or approximately 4,483 years ago. In the beginning, God created the universe in six literal days, including the earth and man and every living thing on the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, 5, 7 through 8, 11, 13, 16, 19 through 20, 23 and 24, 26, 27, 31, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning God created heaven and earth, and the earth was void and empty, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved over the waters. And God said, Be light made, and light was made. And there was evening and morning one day. And God made a firmament, and divided the waters that were under the firmament in the seas, from those that were above the firmament in the clouds, and it was so. And the evening and morning were the second day. And he said, Let the earth bring forth the green herb, and such as may seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, which may have seed in itself upon the earth. And it was so done. In the evening and the morning were the third day. And God made two great lights, a greater light to rule the day, and a, less, a lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And the evening and morning were the fourth day. God also said, Let the waters bring forth the creeping creature, having life, and the fowl that may fly over the earth under the firmament of heaven. And the evening and morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature in its kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and it was so done. And he said, Let us make man to our image and likeness. And God created man to his own image, to the image of God who created him. Male and female he created them. And God saw all the things that he, that he had made, and they were very good. And the evening and morning were the sixth day. So the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the furniture of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. And he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verses 22 through 31. The Lord possessed me, or wisdom, in the beginning of his ways, before he made anything from the beginning. I was set up from eternity, and of old, before the earth was made. The depths were not as yet. And I was already conceived, neither had the fountains of waters as yet sprung out. The mountains, with their huge bulk, had not as yet been established. Before the hills I was brought forth. He had not yet made the earth, nor the rivers, nor the poles of the, of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was present. When with a certain law and compass he enclosed the depths. When he established the sky above, and poised the fountains of waters. When he compassed the sea with its bounds, and set a law to the waters that they should not pass their limits, when he balanced the foundations of the earth, I was with him forming all things, and was delighted every day, playing before him at all times, playing in the world, and my delights were to be with the children of men. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 21 and 22. Do you not know? Has it not been heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood the foundations of the earth? It is he that sits upon the globe of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as locusts. He that stretches out the heavens as nothing, and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 4 and 26. Who has wrought and done these things, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am the first and the last. Who has declared from the beginning that we may know, and from time of old that we may say, you are just. There is none that shows, nor that foretells, nor that hears your words. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. From the beginning of the world they have not heard, nor, perce nor perceived with their ears. The eye has not seen, O God, besides you, 
what things you have prepared for them that wait for you. Matthew chapter 19 verses 4 through 8. But he answered and said to them, Have you not read that the Creator from the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? Therefore now they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a written notice of dismissal, and put her away? He said to them, because Moses, by reason of the hardness of your heart, permitted you to put away your wives. But it was not so from the beginning. So Jesus was saying, although Moses gave them this decree that they were able to do so, it wasn't what God intended and what he wants for our world. He wants, once we are married, um, that we don't uh, get divorced unless it's because of infidelity or um abandonment, which we will go into uh, later more about uh, the reasons for, or a, what I guess I'll say good reason, but a uh, biblical, scriptural uh, reason that makes you not question whether you're doing the right thing or not. But we will definitely get into that as well. Um, Matthew chapter 24, verses, oh, I'm sorry, just verse 21. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, nor will be. The book of Mark chapter 13 verse 19, For in those days will be tribulations, such as have not been from the beginning of the creation which God created until now, nor will be. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 and 14, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through because of, by means of, him, and without him was made nothing that has been made. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. Apocalypse or Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. Thus says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, who is the beginning of the creation of God. Apocalypse chapter 1 verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who has loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Apocalypse chapter 19 verse 11, 13, 15, and 15 and 16, and I saw heaven standing open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat upon it is called faithful and true. And with justice he judges and wages war. And he is clothed in a garment sprinkled with blood. And this, and his name is called the Word of God. And from his mouth goes forth a sharp sword, with which to smite the nations. And he will rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God Almighty. And he has on his garment and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. No, Jesus Christ equals the faithful witness, which equals the Word of God. And the Word of God is your Bible or Scripture. It's it's what became what we have of God. We started with Him, then Jesus came, and He left us with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. The book of John, chapter 17, verse 5. And now do you, Father, Glorify me, speaking of Jesus, with yourself, with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. So Jesus was there when the world was being made. Acts 15, verse 18. To the Lord was his own work known from the beginning of the world. Book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 10. And you, in the beginning, O Lord, did found the earth, and the heavens are works of your hands. 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. I am writing to you, little ones, because you know the Father. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He who commits sin is of the devil, because the devil sins from the beginning. To this end the Son of God appeared, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Which is sin, which he did. Apocalypse chapter 1 verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is coming, 
the Almighty. When was the beginning, as if to say, when was the universe and man created? The times from the beginning of the creation to various of the patriarchs' births are given in the following genealogies and are summarized in the attached bar chart. I don't have the bar chart, but I'm going to read down how he has this listed. Um, Adam, and this, I, I, I'll say this, it's um, Kent Hovind's, uh bar chart of, it's basically his timeline from creation till now. Um, so he's basically basing his own thoughts off of that. Um, number one, Adam to the birth of and death of Noah, which is Genesis chapter 5, 1 through 29, and 9, 20 through 29. Second, the birth of Noah's son, Sem, to birth of Abraham. Uh, the birth of Abraham's son, Isaac. Um, and then the, his death, the birth of Isaac's son, Jacob, um, who lived 147 years. And then Genesis... 47, the birth of Jacob's son Joseph, um, which is unknown, but he lived 110 years. A listing of the genealogy of Jesus as recorded by Matthew's uh, via Mary's ancestry and Luke via Joseph's ancestry is also attached. Um, if you, I'm sorry, if one compares the genealogy from Adam to Jacob as given in the attached bar chart that was given by Luke, one finds that Luke includes an extra descendant, Canaan between Arphaxed and Sal. Also, examination of Matthew's list of the sentence shows two things. He says that Joram begot Ozias. Uh, Joram begot Ozias only in the sense that Ozias was his great-great-grandson. Uh, this can be readily shown from the following scriptures, uh, which is in 2 Paralipomenon uh, 22, 1 and 11, uh, as well as the descendants of them following in chapter 24 and 26. Uh, he says that Josias begot Jeconias. In actuality, Jeconias was Josias' grandson, not son. Um, more of scriptural um, evidence of that in 1 Paralipomenon 3.15 and 3.16. Um, from the last two paragraphs, it would have to be concluded that the genealogical descendancies presented in scripture as so-and-so begot and so-and-so are not all direct father-son relationships, but maybe father-distant relative relationships. Thus, when one is trying to add up the years between different patriarchs or individuals, he must realize that the years he comes up with are the minimum number of years between those patriarchs or individuals, not necessarily the exact number of years. Unless he can prove that only direct father-son relationships are involved or can adjust for missing relatives. Um, knowing from the above that we may only be able to determine the minimum number of years between some of the patriarchs, we may find from the attached bar chart that Noah was born a minimum of 1,056 years before the beginning of the creation. Um, Genesis chapter 7, verses 6 and 11 show that the flood began in the 600th year of Noah's life, and therefore began a minimum of 1,656 years after the beginning of creation. The genealogies also show that the patriarch Jacob was born a minimum of 2,108 years after the beginning of creation. God tells us that Jacob was 130 years old when he and all his house went to dwell in Egypt, um, that's with Joseph, and that he lived there for 17 years before dying at age 147. Therefore, the time of the creation to the time of Jacob was 130 years, oh, I'm sorry, Jacob was 130 years old. Uh, a minimum of 2108 plus 130 is a minimum of 2238 years. God also tells us that the children of Jacob left Egypt in the Exodus after aboding in Egypt for uh, 430 years. Therefore, the time of creation to the time of the start of the Exodus was a minimum of 2238 years plus 430, which is a minimum of 2668 years. Historian, uh, historians have come up with two positions regarding the date of the start of the Exodus. Those working from a literal reading of scripture come up with the date of about 1440 BC, while those working from archaeological excavations come up with about 1290 BC. Therefore, adding the time of creation and the start of the Exodus a minimum of 2668 years to my date of 1448 BC to the start of the Exodus yields a minimum of uh, 4116 years. Adding today's day of 2023, which I did change this, it was earlier before, to the above minimum of, which obviously it's 2023, that's why that's the way it is, 
to the above minimum of 4,126 years shows that God created the universe a minimum of 4,116 years plus 2023, which is a minimum of 6,139 years ago. If we assume that the minimum numbers in the attached bar chart are precise as if this included only father-son and not father-distant relative relationships between the documented patriarchs, then the time the flood took place was a minimum of 4,483 years ago. If father-distant relative uh, relationships exist in the bar chart, however, the time of the flood would be slightly longer or shorter than 4,483 years. So it's about that time, um, but his biggest point here is that um, you can follow these genealogies back to um, Adam. And it's, uh, it's not necessarily the, the easiest thing to do, um, and he did do this thoroughly in a different paper, uh, and I might go into that, a in a, I'm sorry, at a different point, but this paper today was mostly about what happened at the beginning of creation, um, what God did, how he spent his six days working and his seventh day resting and sanctifying that seventh day, um, how he created man, and it says our image, which seems as though it's not only God, that there's, you know, other I would say um, most likely Jesus and the Holy Spirit uh, that he's saying our image about. Um, but also we have to realize that that's not necessarily physical until Jesus. So um, that's something we might not understand until uh, we get to meet him. But uh, I think the biggest takeaway from this today is to see that God and Jesus were very apparent in the creation of our world. It was six literal days that it was made. Um, and that um, if you do go and look into genealogies throughout scriptural texts, you will find that the numbers that my grandfather relate here are the same as the ones you'll find. Um, also, if you look up Kent Hovind, um, he's a creationist. Uh, he has a lot of really good material himself. Um, I've watched quite a bit of it. He is very thorough, and he makes a lot of good points, and I think it's really hard to not listen to what he has to say. So if you're interested about this creation stuff, especially verse evolution, because he does a lot of uh, debating, uh, and he talks a lot about what those debates entail. Uh, very interesting man, and uh, my grandfather very much promoted him and his work, uh, not only to my family, uh, but to... Um, and you, I think anyone that would ask us about that kind of situation, I think it's very evident in our schools that God isn't in them. And uh, I think now more than ever, we need to remind ourselves what really happens and not just what the world portrays uh, about the world and how it happened. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless you. And uh, I will talk to you all soon.